Yellowstone is America's first and most popular national park. Millions of visitors travel through these gates every year. Many walk away with experiences of a lifetime. It is a land of mystery, an expanse of biology, a sphere of science. It was created in 1872 as the world's first national park, a grandiose scheme but lacking in essentials. It was like leaping on the back of a wild Mustang. The ride's gonna be pretty tough until you learn how to work together. They had no idea of how to manage a national park. What should be done? How should we protect it? What do we do with visitors? Yellowstone was a pristine site at odds with the technological evolution of mankind. Nobody knew uh, how do we protect the geyser formations? How do we protect the animals? All of those were, were big questions. Questions debated since the arrival of Euro-Americans. Yellowstone ecosystem ruled by the doctrine of nature was one of balance. But early caretakers and visitors who were freshmen in the School of Environmental Science imposed their own sense of balance. And wolves were here when this park was established. And at that time, however, people didn't like predators like wolves and eliminated them. Great sport back then that anything that ate other animals should die. So coyotes, wolves, eagles, ravens were also killed by the thousands. It has taken over 135 years of man's trial and error for Yellowstone to regain its natural ecosystem. It is a realm like no other. It's difficult to find in the north temperate zone of the planet a place that has as much of its fauna still left from primitive time. It also has evidence of a violent past. It uh, put down multiple feet, many, many feet of ash as far as the Mississippi River. A place where nature ruled supreme, where animals are predated by a witch's brew of churning, boiling cauldrons. Imaginary demons belching forth their steaming hot breath. Scalding hot water spewing forth from deep within the bowels of Mother Earth. Civilization stands by to watch the ebb and flow of an energetic environment. Scientists find its volcanic unrest a window into our planet's past. Caretakers receive training through the insights of Mother Nature. Lessons are learned, plans are altered, priorities change. Only the goal has remained the same. To keep this national park we call Yellowstone a realm untamed. and perhaps most recognizable environmental change man tried to make in this national park was to invite the bears of Yellowstone out of the woods and onto center stage. They became entertainment. The most impressive thing to me about bears is the way that they're so tuned into their environment. The bears of Yellowstone began tuning into a different environment in 1872 when the first visitor entered Yellowstone. It took them a while to find the frequency. But they weren't seen, at least in great numbers, by the first visitors. However, those visitors left garbage behind. And man's garbage is a bear's treasure. There were bears that began coming to garbage dumps almost the minute the park hotels 
and tent camps were established. That would be in 1883. Remote garbage dumps were established away from the hotels and main roads. Wagons would haul the waste from the hotels to the remote dumps. The discarded table scraps became a buffet for the bear. They came in large numbers, both grizzlies and black bears, uh, to, to get the food that was in those garbage dumps. In time, visitors learned a good place to see the bears were at those dumps. And in the summer of 1888, um, we, we have our first accounts of bears actually frequenting park garbage dumps. And these were the garbage dumps that were associated with hotels and tent camps. And from that time on, bears were a staple. For an urban society, watching a dangerous wild animal was thrilling. We know it can be dangerous, but by golly, it sure is fun. Soon, the bear learned the source of the garbage. The trash cans became magnets for the hungry bear. Bears became a living icon as closely associated with Yellowstone as Old Faithful Geyser. They were popular, and to the wealthy visitors of the late 1800s, they were in demand. Bears became an expected part of their lavish visits to Wonderland. To meet that demand, the Army chained this tame bear cub to a pole at Mammoth Hot Springs. Now, every visitor could be assured of seeing a wild bear in Yellowstone. As an extension of bears feeding in garbage dumps, pretty soon, the National Park Service, when it got here, set up bear feeding shows. The Park Service, under the direction of Superintendent Horace Albright, introduced those shows in the summer of 1926. And those shows were actual places where officials would bring out loads of garbage and cans and dump it on a platform. And then the bears would come out of the woods and feed right there on the platform with the visitors watching. Evening garbage was dumped and bears would amble out of the surrounding forest to feast on the discarded food. First to appear were the black bears. When the grizzlies arrived, the black bears retreated from their bigger, stronger, silver-tipped competitor. There are occasions where grizzly bears prey on black bears. The shows became so popular that they built bleachers for visitors to sit on. A flimsy wire fence was built in front of the bleachers, which gave a false sense of protection. However, as you can imagine, putting hungry bears close to humans is like feeding a fox next to a chicken coop. Eventually, the fox is going to notice the other food source. But certainly there were lots of injuries from the 1930s on of humans by bears. The feeding shows were phased out in the 1940s and by the 50s were just a memory. The open garbage dump still drew the bears, but not human spectators. The viewing stands were torn down and the sites closed. Nevertheless, the visitors had a closer, more personal way of watching bears eat. Motorized vehicles arrived in Yellowstone in the summer of 1916. Horseless carriages provide the adaptable bear with a new technique for getting food. It was a style of soliciting that could not exist with stagecoaches pulled by skittish horses. The bear discovered that he could just sit down on the side of the road and wait. Soon a car would show up, stop, and toss him food. For the bear, life just got a lot easier. <laughs>